day after night I, I, I work hustle kill kill and I fight for might as well give me the throne that you inherit and while you're at it give me the badge cause I'm the sheriff Everybody back up Tom from One Chance Tactical. Today what I want to talk to you guys about is the Elfman 3-Gun Trigger. Uh, those of you who have watched my videos before or any of the videos i kind of done reviews on things, um, I don't really like doing tabletop reviews. Um, in particular on the Elfman Trigger, there are so many videos out there where it kind of goes in and there, it's kind of common knowledge now. The aircraft grade needle bearings, um, it has an adjustable pull weight and you can adjust the pull weight without uh, sacrificing the uh, hammer strength to ignite the primer. And all that stuff, I mean, that's just kind of common knowledge that's out there. Um, what I really want to do today in this video is just really explain to you guys some of the experiences that I've had in the past two and a half, three months that I've been using this trigger. Um, why I'm loving it so much and why i kind of just been calling it now my bullet hose uh, for my rifle that I put it in. The, uh, the, the first thing that I really want to address uh, in this video right now is uh, I, I, I overwhelmingly couldn't help but notice that uh, I've seen some people, uh, whether whether it be a YouTube video or they had uh, was on a forum or it was a review left on uh, XYZ website uh, over a customer who had bought the Elfman trigger, and then they turned around and they're like, ah, I'm getting light primer strikes, and I've seen this a few times, and I'm this I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'll be damned, like why would they be getting light primer strikes? Because to date. Um, I actually have 2,720 rounds for this total and I've been logging it. So, so I had this piece of paper in my hand just for some notes. So I took the time and I emailed a few people. I actually emailed five people and three of them actually got back to me. Um, the common denominator that I kind of found as it relates to people who've had uh, light primer strikes and things along that nature, um, there was two things um, that kind of reigned supreme for the people who've gotten back to me. Uh, one is they completely installed the trigger incorrectly. So that's kind of the reason I wanted to address this right now. Uh, if you guys are entertaining or kind of on the fence about getting the trigger, uh, don't hesitate getting the trigger. I've, again, I've put 2,720 rounds to this thing and I've had zero light primer strikes. And the reason why is because I just simply, I didn't get compulsive. Um, when I got the triggers in the mail, I opened them up. I followed the directions to a T. There's, uh, there's two set screws that go on the actual trigger, and then there's two more set screws that go on top of them. So you actually kind of have quad set screws. And uh, when you guys drop this trigger into whatever receiver it's going into, um, those set screws are absolutely critical to making sure that this trigger stays locked in and exactly doing what it needs to do, which is work for us. Um, the second thing I found out, and this was just one guy, and I'm not going to mention anyone's name, um, when I asked him, did you like, what's up with your set screws? And he was like, yeah, I did that. I locked tied them. That's all great. I'm like, what kind of lower is it in? And when he told me the kind of lower, I'm like, you serious? Um, I'm not going to say the manufacturer of the lower receiver, but I'll just put it to you like this. When you're scrolling around on Facebook because you're bored on your phone and you see a meme of someone throwing a boat or excuse me, a rifle off the side of a boat, those are the type of lower receivers I've seen some of these triggers dropped into. So two big things. One, make sure you guys follow the directions if you get the triggers. Those set screws are critical. And two, um, I'm just going to say it, not all lower receivers are created equal. Make sure that if this trigger is getting dropped into a lower receiver that is properly specced. Um, this a couple list of manufacturers that I really like and I've had great luck with over the years. And it's, this list isn't even mutually exclusive. It's just off the top of my head. I mean, Psyonix, uh, Daniel Defense, BCM, LaRue, Noveski. 
I mean, that list can go on and on. But make sure you guys are dropping this trigger into a properly spec load receiver. Some of the uh, ammo that has gone gone through this gun, um, a bigger, the biggest chunk of it has been M855. Um, I put 1,680 rounds of M855, uh, 420 rounds of some Hornady 55 grain, uh, 400, another box of 420 grain, uh, or excuse me, another box of 420 50 55 grain M193, and uh, I put a couple hundred to make up the difference of some frangible ammo. Uh, which I was actually out here shooting today a little bit. Um, I actually started logging these rounds after I already put through the first about 100, 150. So the, that 2,720 is actually a little bit higher than that. And that's still, again, I've had zero light primer strikes. So a couple big things that I really look for in a trigger. Um, the first one's kind of should be common knowledge. or It really is common knowledge bug amongst everybody. Uh, we want trigger that is extremely reliable. Um, thus far, like I said, I've had zero issues out of it, so it's definitely proven itself to be extremely reliable, especially on that high of a round count. Um, second big thing that I look for in a trigger, and uh, this is just my opinion, I want triggers that I can run incredibly fast. Now, why am I over so overly pedantic about running a trigger fast? And the second thing I get really pedantic about is my zeros. Um, why do I want my triggers to run so fast? And uh, this is the way I feel about it. Um, I spent 12 years in the military. Um, the th three years I had spent in combat uh, over in when I was in Iraq. Um, while I was there, I'm not going to say like I'm some cool guy operator, but uh, I've definitely gotten to a couple of gunfights there, and I discharged my M4 plenty of times, and uh, or my other assigned weapon, which was a 240. Uh, never once. Um, through any of those encounters was I shooting my gun faster because like my life was more in imminent danger I shot just the same Those days the same speed as I did any other day on a flat range that we were training prior to leading up to our first and second deployment and so on So when I hear people tell me sometimes oh if you're getting shot at you're gonna shoot back fast Well that signals to me that you're essentially saying you're going to rise to the occasion and that's kind of why I'm like, no, you're not. Um, we will not rise to the occasion. You will fall back on your lowest level of master training. So if we're not able to really get on a gun and get some really good split times on a flat range with no stress, what makes you think that all of a sudden under stress, you're going to get some incredibly fast split times? Now, as it relates to the like my rifle here, and I'll grab it in a minute to kind of show the trigger to you guys a little bit, um, the way I feel about it is... Um, admittedly, the likelihood of me using that rifle now as a civilian in, in like self-defense is extremely low. I definitely, I think I have a better chance of winning the Powerball that I don't even play. Um, I obviously would have a better chance of using the, the, my, my Glock 19 that I carry every day. But if I did find myself in a situation where I actually had to use my rifle, anything that's worth shooting once is worth shooting 7, 8, 15, 20 times. And in doing such... Uh, the particular environment I live in, um, things are going to be, if I were to ever use my rifle, they're definitely definitely going to be pretty close for, uh, way too close for comfort, where I'm going to have some shit in my pants. Um, it's going to be extremely close, very personal, and if that's the case, I'm going to want my gun delivering maximum amount of damage to whomever is trying to cause harm to me. So when I make my trigger selection, obviously we need something that's reliable, but I also want something that I can get on that gun and shoot extremely fast. Um, some of the split times that I've been getting out of this, and this is kind of where I was like, man, this trigger's freaking awesome. Um, I kind of had to dial myself back a little bit because I was like, man, I'm kind of just starting to chase a clock right now. And we don't want to chase the clock. We want to use the sh uh, our pro timers. Our pro timers are a tool. And uh, they're a tool to help diagnose and see what we are and are not doing correctly. But you don't want to chase the clock. And uh, I started noticing myself, I'm like... I would see split times like 11, 10, 11, 13, 11. And I'm like, I want to see my split times like 11s across the board. And I'm like, that's just, we're, we're getting really silly now over one one hundredth of a second in either direction. But uh, so far since I've been using this trigger, uh, my split times are definitely pretty uniform right in the point 11-ish, point 12 time frame. And I've been getting some point 10s in there. Now to kind of put that in context for you, um, why I think that is so incredibly badass 
is a, a fully auto AK. Uh, the cyclic rate of a fully auto AK fires approximately 600 rounds a minute, which means that it discharges around just about every tenth of a second. So with a, a, this, a trigger that has no binary fire, no weird switches, it's just a straight drop in trigger, I'm able to run my trigger one one hundredth of a second slower than a fully auto AK, and I'm currently able to do that cold on demand. So for speed of a trigger, if you guys are looking for something that you can just go straight on Ricky Bobby, or I'm feeling out here shooting, feeling like Tom Cruise from Days of Thunder, definitely take a look at that Elfman trigger because good lord, this is one of the fastest triggers I've ever used to date. And that's a big reason why I'm loving it right now. A couple of questions that uh, people have asked me about the trigger and they uh, kind of always started off with the premise, well, well it's fast, ah, that's great, but is it a precision trigger? And uh, here's my uh, answer for that. Uh, I, I truly believe that you, we can get a great deal of accuracy and precision out of all triggers. Uh, it's up to us, the shooter, to become so intimately familiar with the trigger uh, even the mil spec triggers where it feels like you're dragging a dog sled through gravel and you can feel each burr and impurity and all the imperfections as we start that press. But if we take the time as a shooter and we become that familiar with our triggers, well, we can get a great deal of precision and accuracy, both being two different things, from that trigger. So the uh, Elfman trigger, and uh, we're working with an empty gun right now, um, here's the trigger here. Let me I'll put my hand behind it real quick so you guys can see it. Um, there is a little bit of pre-travel on it, and uh, I doubt you guys will be able to really see it on the camera. So I will get close and I will press very gently. And I felt the pre-travel right there, but I think I, I actually haven't measured it. But I'm pretty sure we're moving hundreds of an inch, if that max. Um, when I was running a zero at 50, kind of confirming a little past 200, um, once you're taking your time and you really start to that press really slow, you can definitely feel a very, very negligible amount of pre-travel coming out of that. But uh, that's, that's fine with me. I actually like a little bit of pre-travel in a trigger. And uh, more so, um, I like when triggers, um, really they, they're offering me a higher level of predictability. Uh, again, all triggers, if we work with them enough, they can be very predictable. But I really, truly like the way this one feels. Um, especially when you're kind of starting to stretch the legs out on your rifle. And you start working past 3, 4, four up 5, 6, hell, up to 700 yards. Um, since I've had this trigger, the farthest I've actually stretched it out was 445. Um, admittedly, everything that I've been doing has been about 400 yards and within. Uh, with most of the work being at right around 100 yards because I've been going full on Tom Cruise Days of Thunder since I had this trigger. So all in all, guys, um, it's a hell of a damn good trigger. I know uh, Elfman offers a discount for uh, LEOs and uh, military guys. So you get a couple of, look, save a few bucks right there. Um, the anti-roll pins, uh, if you order this trigger, I would, I don't know if you guys can see it there. I would definitely advise you guys getting those anti-roll pins. They're not a must but they're definitely cool, they look cool, they keep the trigger pins nice and solid. So between that, the set screws, I mean, we're working with a really solid, flat shoot and package right now. Uh, the trigger itself feels amazing. It has nice little, uh, if you guys can see that right there, it has nice little serrations on it, which is kind of nice. If you see my gun right now, it's, well, I'm in Washington and it's raining. So when a little bit of oil gets on this thing, those serrations are kind of keeping my finger in place so I'm not sliding all over the shoe. Because um, even right now, if you guys look at the receiver right now, you can kind of see some of the CLP that's just kind of been squirting out of it as I've been shooting. And it does get on your trigger shoe. And uh, smooth face trigger shoes, I found my finger to slip off a few times because of the oil. And uh, the serrations on this, they just kind of keep your finger pretty. Um, I guess the uh, tactile feeling, it definitely keeps your finger locked in. So all in all, guys, this is like the, in my opinion, the Rolls Royce, the Bentley of triggers. Um, I've been able to get on this trigger from day one till now when I'm talking to you guys. And I've been able to shoot this gun and run this gun as fast and as hard as I've ever actually been able to run this gun before. Um, this trigger is just absolutely freaking badass. Excuse my potty mouth. Um, I would highly recommend it. Again, if you guys do order this. Make sure you follow the directions and make sure you guys are dropping it into a lower receiver that's properly specced. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Elfman Tactical, thank you again for sending us out these triggers. We are loving them and you guys stay safe.